five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And the kid sings. From a city that's getting less infected by the day, this is The Ramble with me. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be here till midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We're looking at her. She's out there in Lake Oswego, or is it Oswego? No way. How many times do we do this? Oswego. <laughs> Oswego. Lake Oswego in uh, in Oregon. And uh, what's the weather like out there? This is a... It's gray today, normal Oregon yeah. weather. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it's been gray here, and all of a sudden, it's now I looked outside, it's sunny. Mm, so that, that maybe happens around here about four in the afternoon when it's been a gray day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, just uh, you know, I this is my I guess my sixth week indoors. I would imagine. I'm not I, counting. It just I, is. You know, it gets to the point now where you don't know what day it is anymore. I don't have that problem. Uh, really, we if we didn't have a little ca- a little electric calendar that had a big word that says like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we wouldn't know what day it was. No, because my wife works from home, so we don't have that that ritual of her getting in a, in a car and going to work every morning, okay? Uh, she drives a car to work in Manhattan? No, 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 no. We hires a car to take her to work. Oh, wow, morning. that must be some big deal paying job. Well, no, it, it, but it's also a not big deal paying uh, trip either. It only costs her about $15 a morning. She goes at like 6 in the morning, so it's just... Traffic is really easy and so on. But anyway. Yeah, somebody said recently, check your privilege. Yeah, yeah, well, of course. But anyway, the fact is that she isn't going to work. She's doing all her work from home. So after a while, we forget, like, what day it is. So we make sure she doesn't do anything on, like, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, okay, that she just doesn't go in here and start working because that way we can understand a little bit the ritual of what day it is. But otherwise, it's very strange. Why Friday? What do you mean Friday? No, Saturday. You said on Sunday. Friday, Saturday, oh, no, and I, Sunday. No, I said Saturday and Sunday, excuse me. I, I said Friday, and then I changed it to Saturday and Sunday. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, but, I mean, you lose all sense of, 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 of you know. Well, you do. I don't. Yeah, well. But, uh, you Time know, I lose, not days. The only thing we feel fortunate for is the size of our apartment and uh, the fact that I, I have her here. A lot of people don't have anybody, and they're there alone. And Tell they, me about it. You know, yeah. And how, I mean, do you go out? I mean, you know, what's the situation where you are? I stay, I live by myself. Yeah, but I mean, do you, have, you, have you been going out at all? I go to the grocery store once every two weeks. Mm-hmm. In between, I go to the same grocery store if there's anything I have to do with getting a drug because the pharmacy is in there too. And um, I go to the mailbox and the trash bins when needed. Mm-hmm. And uh, not much else. Now, what, what kind of gear do you wear when you go out? I wear a homemade mask and nitrile gloves. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Good. Now, when you go out to get the mail, do you do you go through that process too, or do you just because I here the reason I'm asking you is you wrote a very interesting blog the other day about what life is like now and all how much trouble it is just to do something like go to the mailbox. I don't remember this. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> oh, I got this. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about how you just have to go through all I these saw, different oh, rituals. The worst part is coming home with the groceries and if you go only every two weeks like i do Mm -hmm. you're bringing home a lot of groceries so before i leave i take out the lysol spray and i take out a roll of paper towels and i take out some bags and then i bring everything into the front patio on that table and then i wash down with the spray on the pair with the gloves 
Um, every single thing I have bought and put it in clean, what I know are clean bags, and then I can take it in. I leave the shoes outside, and then I put anything that has to be put in the freezer away right away. But then I go to the laundry room, take off all my clothes and put them in the laundry, mm -hmm. and then take a shower. And that's, by the time I'm done, that's an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. And I have to, when I finish putting the groceries away, then I have to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> It pretty well takes up the day. <laughs> well, I go down to the mail. I've been down to the mailbox a couple of times. And so I put on the mask. I put on the gloves, the rubber gloves. And I go down because I got to push buttons, right? To push in the elevator. And I don't know who's touched the buttons. Uh, and then I go down there and I get the mail out of the mailbox. And then I come back up. And now I go through the same ritual. It's like... First, I first what I do is I wash the gloves while they're on my hands, okay, in soap and water, and then I take them off, all right, and then I do my hands, you know, and then uh, depending on how paranoid I am that day, I go take a shower, just like you. I mean, it's just, you, 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 it, it's amazing how, how, what's the word I'm looking for? How how careful you become in all of this, and how paranoid. You become oh no no no! The best part is when you screw it up. Well, <laughs> I always screw up something. <laughs> if I were living where you're living, I would not feel as threatened as I do living in New York. Oh really? Which which is which is the most infected city in America? Well, of course, we know that it, New York, of course, is. You know, I'm, I'm I'm beginning to see why people don't like New Yorkers because everything you've got do and or goes on in your city is worse or better than everybody else in the world. Well, our numbers I, show I it. I would be no more afraid in New York than I am here, which is, it takes me 40 minutes to work up the nerve to walk out of the house every time I need to. Well, you, you're also that way doubly because uh, you, have, you have a compromising condition. It doesn't right? have anything to do with that. I would feel the same way without it. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I, you know, I mean, New Yorkers have a right to feel this way because we have been impacted, I mean, in a rather incredible fashion here. Compared to any other city, our percentages are higher. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, things are going down now. Things have turned the other way. And as long as we keep observing the rules, uh, we probably will be able to get it down to almost zero. But today we only had four, I say only had 480 deaths, I think, which is the lowest amount we've seen since the onslaught of this thing. But I mean, it, it, it you know, and uh, uh, it, they've got refrigerated cars outside of hospitals to take care of the corpses. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing what happened here. And it happens because we are such a big city and we are so compacted population-wise and also because we have a lot of people coming into this town from other countries and so on and so forth, that this then becomes a hot spot, no question about it. And it's been the major hot spot in the United States. So you're, I'm just afraid to go out, you know. Uh, and uh, but we we we've learned to order in. Have you learned the joys of ordering food? I've done it twice. I've ordered from this thing. I don't really like it, and so I buy food in such a way that I don't have to unless I'm just too tired or lazy. Well, we were missing the stuff from Costco, okay? Uh, kitchen towels, paper towels we were missing. Cheese we like, uh, a chicken or whatever. So I, f I found this thing called Instacart, and it's not cheap, but they will send somebody over there to pick all the do, do all the shopping for you and bring it to your house, and so we did that. And then we also have another thing that uh, Mar Marjorie shops on for little food for dinners. All of a sudden, we realize we've been ordering so much. I think we have enough food to last us for the next year. I think we're we're in for the onslaught, as it were. But I mean, it's, it the which is why nobody else can find any food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, that's not a joke. I mean, I meant that as a jab, not a joke. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, we got to eat. 
well, you don't have to have a year's worth of food in your house. Well, we don't know how long. You know, we would rather stay in than go out. Check your privilege. Well, I'm, I will check my privilege. I have the ability. I'm lucky I have a large apartment. I don't get the cabin fever other people would get. I mean, I am getting a little squirrely, but, you know, I, 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 I'm very fortunate that way. I'm very fortunate that I have somebody to suffer this with uh, who, beca- who I can talk to. Um, it, 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 but it, but still, it is, and I think we're irrevocably changed. I, I don't think that even if we get sloppy and slide backwards and a whole bunch of things, there's stuff that is not that is go- never going to be the same as it was before. Such as, I think I I think movie theaters are dead. I think they're gone. I don't think anybody wants to sit next to somebody else. And even if they move those seats further apart, I don't think people are going to trust that. Um, I, I think I think home watching movies at home is going to be the the new normal. Um, uh, I, I restaurants, gosh, you know that uh, they would have to really show me that they got tables far enough apart and paper menus that they can dispose of and so on, because I we don't we don't trust any of this anymore. Because all of a sudden, people were becoming infected and didn't realize you were being infected, and it was too late at that point. So, you know, I mean, it, it's just not never going to really be the same. Uh, and uh, I think Cuomo was on the air today saying that what we have to do is just learn the lessons of this and try and stay out ahead of a curve like this rather than be behind it, you know? And so, you know. All you snobby people living out there in uh, Oregon where you got uh, parks you can go to and woods you can walk through and not worry about the virus, I think you've got a privilege too that way. What? What What are you giving me the look for? I'm getting the look. Oh, boy. Here here we go. I don't understand why you think our life is better than yours. I think you have more room. I think you have... Uh, uh, more of an ability to n- be socially d- uh, distant at, at greater distances. I mean, I wish I were living in California right now where I could get in the car, go to the top of Mount Tamalpais and not have to worry about bumping into anybody, you know, and have all that fresh air and all of that. Meanwhile, I don't have that. And even if I go out, where am I? I'm on the streets of New York. And you know that is not exactly the country. Um, so I think there's an advantage to that. I think people, in my, I have a friend, Larry Brown, and he has a car, and he says he goes over to Marin County and drives around in the back roads and so on so that he can have some space and not bump into anybody. You know, so, I mean, but we don't have that luxury here. You, you're going to walk out the door, and there are going to be people there. You know. I just, you know... I lived in New York for 40 years, Alex, and I walked around all the time where I didn't bump into people. If you're not in town. But you never (laughs) thought about whether you were six feet apart from them. Sometimes they would get this close to you, but you wouldn't touch. You know what I'm saying? No. I don't have, I I don't have the, uh, I wish, I wish I had a house in the country and we could be living in it right now. You wouldn't take the virus up there for those people that don't have a hospital. (laughs) No, but if I'm out living in a house that's up uh, uh, away from everybody else, it's not gonna wouldn't be a problem. If I moved into a neighborhood, that would be a problem. You know, but I mean, um, it, uh, but I I'll, I'll tell you, it has given New Yorkers a whole new uh, um, uh, appreciation. Uh, again, once again, we have to be reminded of this: of that we are a community and that we are responsible for each other. And that our actions um, um, uh, are, are, are going to affect other people. And that's why you wear the mask. And that's why you don't violate the rules. Because you want to bring the death rate down. And it's also the, you know, it's also the health workers and the police and the, um, uh, everybody that's involved in the front lines of this thing that you also want to protect as well. And I think New Yorkers, when asked to come to that conclusion and to come to that uh, way of living, 
will do it. I mean, New Yorkers are very good. At night, you look out on the streets of New York, and it's empty. It's true of every other big city. Too. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, I mean, it's empty. I mean, you, New York, the city that never sleeps, I think, is the line. I'm sorry, it snores out there at night. The only thing you hear is an occasional ambulance, you know. And they're getting to be less and less, I might add. I've been judging the virus based upon the numbers of sirens I hear at night, uh, <laughs> you know. And, and I don't, I really don't hear that many any longer. So it's, 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 it's getting better. And I think we have a pretty good governor here. He's handled this very well. You know, he's, he's acted like a true leader. And I've never been a big fan of him, uh, but I am now. And I, every morning, I, we're up. We, hey, it's our big part of the day is, hey, it's 11.30. The governor is going to give his uh, latest statistics and his latest uh, speech. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's invigorating, to say the least. It's not that he tells this stuff is going to be better or that things are better. He tells us exactly how they are, and then he gives us a little bit of a pep talk about we're doing a great job and we should keep doing it because if we stop doing it and gives us what would happen if we stopped doing it, how it could very easily backslide. And, uh, you know, it, it's sure, certainly more of a pleasure than the 6 o'clock show every night that goes on in which we find a complete moron leading this country. You still watch? Does anybody still watch? Uh, I, I watch. I, 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 about two weeks I, ago. I watch. It's kind of like you want to see how much you can suffer. <laughs> and after a while, I just got to turn it I mean, off. Anything that he says that's important, other people will tell us about afterwards. So there's no need. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to see his. It, he, what he's doing is a is a an election rally, and I don't need to attend one of those. <laughs> if he says something that affects my life, sure enough, the news media is going to tell me. Look, so yeah. I I know in this respect you're like me. You don't like people who are stupid. <laughs> I mean. You know, I don't like people who are stupid. And he is just stupid. I mean, he's just unintelligent. I'm surprised this guy ever got even through a military academy. You know, I mean, I, I'm just amazed by his, his stupidity uh, and how uninformed he is about everything. And I, it, it, we just needed somebody better than that to lead this country in a time like this. But unfortunately... We got what we got, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there we are. As you sit there. Where oh, I am now, me? Yeah, yeah, in, uh, in Lake Oswego, okay? And, and you look out at the rest of the nation. How does it appear to you? I mean, how do you see it as unraveling? Do you see the... the problem is getting worse or getting better what's going to happen to the economy what's going to happen to old people you know well old people are dying like great like black and brown people you know they're yeah. the most those are the highest numbers of people who die yeah um i had a discussion with my palliative care physician this morning mm -hmm. and i have lung disease i have both copd and i have cancer in one lung Mm -hmm. so that if I get the virus, I'm dead. There's just there's no point in bothering with me because I'm not going to survive. Uh, with, that mainly gives you a really bad pneumonia when you get the virus. Right. And so, you know, we made arrangements, and he's making sure that it's stated wherever it needs to be that if I am brought to the hospital with the virus, they don't ventilate me and just let me quietly go. Yeah. Um. And I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that was an easy decision. I had no problem with that. Um, I just had to make him promise to do, without a ventilator, whatever they can do so that I'm not gasping for breath mm -hmm. for any, you know, amount of time before I just expire. Yeah. And, um, because I don't see the point. I'm, I'm 79 years old. You know, I've led a good life. So if that happens, it's just time to say bye. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to still do, oh, 
you know, I'm so tired of all the cleaning. (laughs) 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 I have to clean the damn food all the time. And me and my clothes and the house and wipe down everything. God, I've never, ever lived anywhere that I've kept as clean as this place. <laughs> we, we spray every, every box that we bring, you know, gets delivered like from parcels and whatever. You don't bring them in. Well, no, rubber gloves, we bring them into a foyer we have, a, a tiled foyer, and then we spray them down with disinfectant. It would be better if you did that out in the hall. Well, I'm not leaving my stuff out in the hall. Somebody might steal it. Well, you see, that's the difference between like Oswego and New York. Okay, all right, you're privileged. Um, but uh, I, you know, I keep a box, a small box, that I dump all mail in when I bring it from the mailbox, mm-hmm. and I just leave it there for four or five days before I look at it. Mm. Um, and by then, the viruses, any viruses that came in on it, are dead by then. Mm. Um, but the, the groceries, all that I do outside as I explained earlier, yeah. and um, and it just takes forever. Nobody, I, you know, I never meant to be this clean. <laughs> and, and you were a pretty tidy person. Tidy, that's different yeah. from clean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, little, little piles are one thing, but the whole surface clean, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what the worst thing is that's happened to us here in New York. We are not only we not only have COVID out there, we have the worst allergy season probably on record. I mean, every day it's approaching the 12 mark, which is the top of the scale. It's high every day. So you're wheezing a little bit, you're sneezing and all that. And you're going, do I have CO, you know, the COV, uh, COVID or, or, or what? And the fact is it's usually just allergies. Just before we started this recording today, I was watching MSNBC, and there was a reporter who went to some kind of scientific lab where they... I saw that. Yeah. Did you see it? And where you coughed and how far it went? Yeah. Six feet is not enough. It's 12 at least. At least. At least. I mean, that was really eye-opening, that report. I hope they keep running it during the day so more people see it, because... I thought it was really important to understand that. And I've had trouble at the supermarket with people coming right up next to me, Mm -hmm. bundling in next to me um, by the shelves. Mm -hmm. And the same thing at the mailboxes here. And I was getting stuff out of my mailbox a week or so ago. And a woman, I'm busy pulling this stuff out. And a woman comes right up next to me and going into a box below mine. And I said, could you wait? And she said, oh, I don't have the virus. Oh, really? How do you know that, lady? <laughs> you, you might have it and, and not have it so that you know it, and you still can then pass it to someone else. That was my point. Yeah. And, um, and so, I mean, that's not, that's not secret news, you know. Um, everybody knows that. And, um, and I just don't get people. I just don't understand. I mean, that, that's only one. I've had these. I've had half a dozen incidents like that at the store, or the mailbox, or somewhere, and I just don't understand people. You know, who's driving me crazy are all those people protesting. Uh, well, I, don't, the, I think that it's far more serious than just drive you crazy. I hope. Well, I mean, it 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 drives me nuts from the standpoint that how stupid can they be? You you hear them being interviewed, and you go, my God. You know, these people are at, well, they're being led by a moron. But uh, uh, you just wonder about this. And then then I said to myself, well, maybe it's God's way of we uh, thinning out the herd. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, thinning out the stupid from our society. Because some of these people are going to get COVID just from that very activity. Um. And have, I'm sure, have already, that's happened. Yeah. Um, but it, you see, it, it also affects you and me and everybody else. Is, you know, somebody goes to one of those in Tennessee or Georgia, and then it gets in the car and, oh, because we don't want to be around people, we want to be in the wild out there, drives to New York or Oregon. I mean, I'm beginning to have some sympathy with people who want to close the state borders. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we our, our governor is very aware of that, and so he has a deal with all the surrounding states. 
I oh. understand. So, so by the, the way, just so you know, the whole world watches, yeah, and we yeah. know everything you yeah, know. Not yeah. you don't. Well, have to I'm be just, I'm world. just saying it as a general thing to, to say here, and 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 the point he does make is exactly that, that you you know you want to go to see to Connecticut because there's a beach open. Well, you know you're going to take your your disease with you if you do. The, the best place is to stay in place as best you can. Let's get through this. It's hard now because the sun is starting to shine and you're going to want to go out and do stuff, you know. But hey, we've run out of time. Okay. And, you know, we're both still here for another week. Uh, you know, and and that's... that's <laughs> Huh? We'll see what happens. And, and that's the good news. Yeah, that's the good news. Well, I love you, dear. And always good to see you. Always good to talk to you and to uh, just deal with what this is all about, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, she is at timegoesby.net. That is her blog, and it's worth reading, especially when she writes about all the problems of having to change her clothes and take showers and <laughs> go to the mailbox and, you know. In this day, day and age, that's interesting, folks. That's interesting. Hey, if you're stuck at home for weeks on end, the laundry starts to get interesting. <laughs> Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, Ronnie. Bye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, Ronnie Bennett uh, with us once again, and we love having her uh, make her appearance once every couple of weeks on this program. Uh, quickly, uh, so we, uh, we, we take care of this piece of business, looking at the world map. Uh, there it is. Uh, we are now up to uh, 2,563,384 people who have had the corona uh, virus, the CO, uh, the COVID nineteen novel, COVID nineteen. It keeps having all kinds of names. And here in the U.S., of course, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we have eight hundred and twenty-four thousand uh, four hundred and thirty-eight, with a total amount of deaths of forty-five thousand forty-two. Of those in New York City today. We're down to 480, I mean, for the day, for the day, okay? So we're kind of we're kind of proud of that uh, a little bit. But we're not letting it uh, get us uh, uh, too complacent because if we get complacent, uh, we'll kill ourselves. Uh, that's, you know, getting complacent in a situation like this is not something uh, you want to do. Okay, I've got the lines open now. Let me turn on the green light. There we go. Now all the people can see that I am on, and we can uh, 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 talk to people. If you want to call, uh, just give us a call, and then we will start putting people up in the uh, in our little thing here. Hold on a second, folks. Uh, oh, here, here comes Brian Neary. Oh, boy, Brian again. Great. Good to see you, Brian. Always good to see you. There we go. There's a picture of you, and uh, let me see here. Is he? Is he? Where is he? Okay. Let me let me uh, bring him on here. Oops. Wait a minute. There's Vernon Nunn. Uh, first of all, let me get Brian Neary in here. Uh, Brian Neary. There. Oh come on, jeez, Almighty! Every time somebody calls, it throws throws it off. Uh, there's Brian Neary. Your your face is a little uh, little uh, orange tonight. I don't know why. Honor of Trump. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's it's in honor of Trump, right? I didn't I didn't realize that. Uh, hold on a second. Let me do that. Then I got to put somebody else in here. Hold on. Oh, people are calling like crazy. Okay. Uh, oh boy. All right, now hold on. Uh, maybe nobody will call for a second here, and I can get somebody put in there. Um, uh, let me see here. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he was already in there anyway, so we'll let Charlie stay there, and then we go over to here, and we've got uh, uh -huh, and we can. Uh, let's see here. Who else do we have? Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five. Right, right. Okay. So there we go. Oh wait a minute. Here comes Charlene Martinez. Let me uh, just um, 
add her to the uh, to the crowd. Uh, turn on your camera there, Charlene. There we go. Uh, I want to put her in the number four spot. I'm doing this pretty good tonight, folks. I'm not going crazy. Let me see here. Oh, there she is. You got that. Maybe that is that yours? No, that's not yours. That's uh, somebody else's. Okay, here. Let me look here. Is that? Um, is that? Uh, yeah, that's Charlene. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, there we go. We got everybody. Hello, Brian. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Phil. Hello, Charlene. Hello, Jeff. And uh, hello, whoever's going to call next. But I. It didn't, it didn't drive me crazy to do this uh, tonight. How are you all doing? How was your weekend? Anybody do anything interesting? Well, I guess nobody left the house. That's pretty much what that means. Yep. Yes, Jeff? I went to New Haven. You went to where? To New Haven. New Haven, Connecticut. Yes. Now, you to live... To see my dentist. To see your dentist? Yes. Why? Because I had to have some, some dental surgery. Oh, did something bad happen to your mouth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what happened to your mouth that was so bad? I guess I have an implant, or I had an implant. Yeah, it's I know. falling and, apart. And yes. it's falling apart. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I haven't, the... I, haven't, I haven't had one long enough to have that happen yet. Wait a minute. Vernon Nunn's here also. I have to put him in there. Uh, I think, yeah. Are you there, Vernon? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Okay. Well, why? Why? Oh, there we go. I need to put that uh, there. Okay, there we go. And then I got to go over to the eighth spot. And who who just called? Who was the person who just called? Tony. What's money? Tony. To oh, Tony. Okay, I got to get Tony, Tony. In here. Hold on, Tony. Tony. <laughs> phony. Phony. Tony. Banana. Banana. Phony. <laughs> Uh, Tony Webhead. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, look at that. Aren't they all pretty? So anyway, so you, you had a, a dental emergency. What? Well, I keep yes. worrying about some kind of emergency happening. Like, you know, I, I have a hernia. I, if it suddenly decides it's going to strangulate on me or my tooth is going to go bad or anything else, because I don't want to go anywhere near a hospital or a dental office. If I can possibly avoid it, you know, uh, not that it, you know, it, it, under normal conditions, I would go. But boy, with this going on, 45,000 people are dead now in this country yeah. because of this thing. But he's doing a good job. Oh, he's doing a great job of, of killing us. Jeff, the video, the TV. Yes. Uh, Jeff, was the, was the tooth under warranty? Yeah, no, it's not. They don't put a warranty on those things, do they? They charge you like uh, an implant, what, costs you about $5,000, right? Yeah. Cost me about 1600 Mine's going to cost me for my part of it because I have the insurance. Uh, but, I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not cheap, you know. And so if it goes bad, you should, get, you should get some kind of money back or the guy who put it in should have to put in a new one. You should go to discount Implant City. They've got better deals. Uh, really? They're so good that you think that they fell off the back of a truck. Yeah, yeah, and they probably what, did. What kind of precautions did they take? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Anybody else do anything interesting? I mean, dental surgery isn't necessarily interesting. Uh, you know, it's, it's certainly... Well, you know, as things are going... That is kind of exciting. <laughs> you know? Well, you, you, you could do it for me instead. Yeah. Oh. I mean, like, what, what happened to you, Alex? Well, uh, I, uh, I woke up this morning, and I stubbed my toe. Wow, really? Exciting. You know, I mean, it's just... <laughs> it, Alex, are you still walking around with a post for your implant, or they didn't do anything yet? I haven't started my implant yet. Oh. No, I haven't started my implant yet, so... Uh, I'll, it, I, the implant will happen uh, probably it, it's supposed to happen like in a couple of weeks but <laughs> forget it I'm not getting I'm not taking the subway down to the to the <laughs> dentist you know my dentist <laughs> what my dentist uh, my cleaning uh, for uh, June 1st 
Well, he's probably hoping against hope on that one. You know, uh, I, 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 I can't see that. At least here in New York, we're going to get back to. It's not even a question of normalcy of being able to do anything uh, for. I, I think till the end of the year. Yes, Vernon. My son lives in Queens, I think I told you, and the other day, one day last week, he went for a ride on his bicycle and went up the west side of Manhattan, back down the east side of Manhattan, and he said he hardly saw any cars. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I had a, um, there's a thing you can go to, and I don't I don't know what the name of it is right now, it's something like Earth Camera or something like that, Four. and they have Times Square as the, as the, as, as the live camera. And you can go there any day of the week. I went, I went and watched it on a Sunday. There was nobody there. Nobody. Just empty. You know. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it, it's gotten that way. And your son is in Queens. Now, you know Queens is the, what can we call it, the hot spot of America. That's where the major amount uh, of uh, cases. Thing, Alex. Me and Shecky have yeah. 23,000 cases here. Yeah, yeah he only I'm lives afraid to leave the house. Elmhurst, like, Elmhurst is bad, like, like Elmhurst. Elmhurst. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, Manhattan I isn't isn't doing that badly now, you know. So my my youngest son is in uh, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good place to to die. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a pretty a pretty expensive place to die these days. Yeah. You know, I thought the uh, Orthodox Jews weren't uh, uh, following the uh, the routines. They were gathering. They were having minions. Yeah, they, they're uh, still doing all this bad. stuff. And it's you know, so far as I'm concerned, things like this, like those guys who are all demonstrating in those various cities, small groups of people demonstrating, but the ones who are demonstrating, I'm I'm all for their activity because this is a way that we can like weed out the idiots. Right, because they'll be dead in another month or two. You know, mm -hmm. go ahead, you, have your you have your little gatherings, to get together, do that? your whole thing. You're gonna you're killing yourself. You're killing other people too. You're in That's inconsiderate right. I'm little hoping jerks. Drop Alex, those people, let them huh? go. That's less have to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, uh, screw them. You know, uh, we'll, if they we'll want need the data. what? We'll need the data. Well, yeah, right. After they go home, and you know, we can start to see how everything's working out. You know, I think that that's a big advantage that New York and I think even California will have is you know we'll be the last ones to go back and see how everything works out. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I, I, wow. these guys want to do that. Let them, let them, let them do it. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop them. Hold well, on a second. They had a oh, lady oh. on Young Go. This is in China. The one in when some. Heavy set lady yelling out of the car where the nurses were like protesting where they couldn't pass. Yeah. I was like, I'm kind of, I can't believe I said this. I'm like, I hope she kind of gets it really. <laughs> Doesn't spread it to anybody. Just give it to her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I, I looked at him and I went, this is God's way of weeding out the, uh, the, the morons, you know? Uh, and uh, it, they're, they're, what they're doing, which pisses me off, it isn't that they are. Um, endangering themselves, they're endangering me. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, and that bothers me. You know, go ahead. You want to go kill yourself? Here, here's a gun. Stick it in your mouth and pull the trigger. Right, but don't inflict your your politics and your feelings on somebody else's health because being over the age of eighty, uh, you're you you could possibly be killing me. That's pl it, plain and simple. Yes, Mr. Neary. Uh, they had the, the governor of, um, of New Jersey on, I think Cuomo's tonight. Yeah. And uh, they said, you know, he said he's being very cautious, of course, you know, like, like New York City. And um, they said that his approval rating has jumped, like up 71% oh, yeah, yeah. approval rating. Murphy. Because, yeah, yeah, he, yeah Murphy, because his, you know, he, he's saying, hey, we've got to be safe. We need to stay home. We, you see all the deaths that are still happening. I think they still had the biggest death day uh, today or yesterday. Yeah, the nursing um, homes in the nursing homes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're his people are really behind him, which is really good to show. You know. Well, I mean, yeah. the thing is that you know uh, uh, Cuomo was saying it, and he said that 
uh, you know, it, it isn't a matter. We got to. We can't take our foot off the pedal. You know, it's getting nice outside. He said that's the big problem. It's getting nice, and we look out the window and we hear the birdies sing, and we want to be out there. We want to be taking a walk. We want to be smelling some fresh air, but you can't do it. But what we do now will determine what happens in the future. He said. If tomorrow I suddenly said, okay, everybody, go outside, do whatever, whatever you want to do, open up the restaurants, do all of that, he said, I'll guarantee you within three mm. days we'll double the death numbers. Yeah. You know, or, or the, the numbers of people who get it, okay? Yep. Death numbers take a while. He said, it will be that fast. He said, we have to keep doing this and doing this until we start seeing, I mean, we're seeing results of, of staying indoors. I mean, we've gone in a week, I think we've almost cut the death toll in half, okay, which is pretty phenomenal. A little, little more, a little less than half. Um, what? What were you saying, no, Charlene? What? What are you saying, Charlene? We can't hear you. She broke oh, I, No, I don't think it's me. Uh, oh, you were? Were you saying something though, Charlene? Oh no, um, you know the uh, new gentleman. What's his name again? Kim. Brian. Brian. Excuse me, Brian. Right. Yeah. yeah, Brian. No, Harris. he mentioned my governor, uh, Murphy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't allow any knuckleheads to do anything. That's what he calls it. Any knuckleheaded activity, uh, you uh -huh. know, they curtail it. And the nursing homes is where everything's happening in New Jersey. Like, you know, I used to live in New York for years. Uh, I was there for almost 30 years before I moved out. But mm -hmm. um, you don't see a lot of older people in New York. At least I didn't. Until I moved to New Jersey, I started seeing, like, senior citizens. So in New, in New Jersey, it's affecting like nursing homes like crazy. Oh yeah. There, there's a new one. Um, Thirty people just died in uh, Paramus in one nursing home. It wiped out the whole nursing home, and quite a lot of the staff. So that's the way it's hitting New Jersey. That it's hitting like nursing homes like wildfire. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, they're going to get sued. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of people trying to sue the nursing homes for this, and they're investigating these nursing homes now like crazy. And, and they can't get anyone to work in them anymore. They're going to have to try to pay a lot of people a lot more money. And did you hear the new thing now? Target is really mad. The people that work there, they're going to go on a work strike because, uh, you know, I guess they're starting to get more and more money. Amazon's on strike. Well, so you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care strike. how much more money you pay somebody. If they're putting their life at risk, I don't, I don't think they should be, have to put their I life at home. risk. You know? Well, they're mad. If I had a plastic shelf, I'm home. Uh, well, they yeah, said, yeah, Alex, right. that they think people have nothing else to do, so they go out to the stores and drive the workers crazy and, you know, act up and, uh, you know, breathe. Yeah. Yeah, I think like Spain, they're... Hmm? To do uh, at-home yeah. shopping. Yeah, okay, all right. Now, uh, like uh, wait, Brian wants to say something. <laughs> I think... Oh, it's sorry. Something, something, it's like something on the radio today, and I think they're saying like Spain or something... They they weren't allowing any children outside, not even to play, and they just started lifting that restriction just uh, really like really. this next couple of days or something. Well, we thought so, that there we thought there were no kids dying, and it turns out there was a five year old kid who died yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so so I mean it you know it, 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 look we're gonna have a lot of time to go out on sunny days once we get this thing taken care of, but in the meantime. Be considerate of your neighbors. Don't go out if you if you don't have to. Of course, you've got to go to the grocery store occasionally. You can't starve. We between sending out to um, uh, 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 what is it? I have I have one service that buys stuff at Costco for me. We have an, yes. we have another service, um, at Fresh Direct, where we get food, and and we've got now we've stocked up on enough food and soda to keep us here for the next millennium. Okay. But we're 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 we've taken care of ourselves that way. But there are certain things you have to do. You have to go to the grocery store occasionally. But you know, wear gloves, wear a mask, and so on. Right, um, 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 uh, Patrick. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you doing about getting groceries now? Do you, do you have somebody go get it for you, or what? I, I've, I've mostly had that done anyway because it, it's such a pain in the ass since moving to my apartment. Mm -hmm. My garage was attached at my house. Mm -hmm. So 
flying from the counter into the house was a lot easier. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've got people that get them for me. But, I mean, if I had a doctor's appointment last week, and I didn't wear gloves because I'm not going to go through it again, but I think all of you have heard me how useless gloves and sanitizer are for me personally. So the only thing I wear out is a mask. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's gloves, totally useless. So Why do you feel the gloves are useless? <clears throat> Rolling around. Somebody that's heard this, I well, it's from, Oh, yeah, because of the wheelchair. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. Okay. But the reason I wear the gloves is because, for instance, I get just go down and get the mail I put on the gloves because I'm touching the buttons on the elevator. Yeah. Now, last night we had a meeting, the Tenants Association meeting, and we did it by Zoom. So I finally got to see what Zoom looks like full born, and uh, um, it's okay. It's, it's you know, I, I couldn't use it here. Okay. Uh, and it's it's a little uh, it has it has some nice features and I'm sure within about a week and a half we're going to see them all incorporated into Skype because Skype's going to want to keep up with Zoom okay because it's getting so much publicity but you know this is just fine but we had this whole the Zoom meeting and uh, nobody could figure out if anybody in the building has has had has COVID. Uh, and they, they say one woman got uh, pneumonia, and then another woman got pneumonia, and they think that's now the code word for COVID. You know. So yes, uh, uh, Vernon. We got a full house here. Add Mr. Stamper in there. Uh, add Mr. Who? The bike rider, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, I've got Kevin in there. Oh, I. You know what I didn't do? No. Is what no. I didn't do. I didn't push the button. Uh, here yeah. we go. There we go, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Then now there we go. And there's a. Uh, it's a royal flush, actually. Isn't that a royal flush, Phil? Full house. Full house. It's, it's only a full house. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, hold on a second. Then I'm going to have to change that. I don't want anybody accusing me of of, of calling it a. Um, well, this jackpot full house. Okay. Uh, now I just change it to full house. There we go. Okay. Um, no, but, uh, uh, you know, nobody could figure out if anybody had, died, had, had it in the building. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I, you know, not knowing that, I'm still not going to not wear my gloves going down the elevator. I thought the woman next door, oh, that wasn't COVID that she died no, of. No, she died of complications Dude. from knee surgery. Yeah. Yeah. She got, it went into sepsis. Um, but I think she died of COVID in this respect, that if you mm -hmm. hadn't had the COVID virus, she probably could have just gone over to Mount Sinai and been taken care of. But because it, it was so crowded over there, she relied on her doctor to just say, oh, uh, it's okay, take some aspirin, or I'll send you some pills or whatever. And, you know, he didn't see her. He didn't know what was going on. And she died basically from neglect she might still be alive if the covid virus thing weren't going on so was hope a covid ship or a non covid ship at the time that she uh, got complications because she could have gone to the hope when it was only seen uh, the hope the patients. hope was non covid i believe and they turned well, i'm trying to remember yeah i think it was non covid yeah we wound up not even we wound up not even needing it and uh um uh, our governor said, uh, you "Take it if you need it somewhere else, you know, because we don't need it. We but have that, that would have been an opportunity for someone like her to use the hope at at that time. At at that time, but you know, the doctor should have said, go down to the hope, you know, mm -hmm. or should have said, go down to uh, 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 where is it, the place where the the big uh, Javits. Javits Center, Jacob Javits Center, go there." Uh, but uh, he didn't think to do it. And it really, she died of neglect, but because all of this was going on, she died in the confusion. Mm. Are they still using the Javits? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they had about, uh, what, 1,200 people in there at one point, they say? You know. Um, and Javits was taking COVID patients. They originally were not going to. That was going to be the overflow for all the people 
But mm-hmm. yeah, you know, what our governor said was we thought that we need that kind of facility for non-COVID patients. But then all of a sudden, with all this going on, nobody's murdering anybody, and nobody's shooting anybody, mm-hmm. and nobody's running over anybody in a car, and there are very few emergencies other than COVID emergencies. I, I read, and, and I cannot for the life of me remember where I read it today, that uh, crime had actually increased in certain areas. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, that I haven't heard. That I, uh, See, I don't have my iPad here to look it up. Yeah. Well, it's probably Alex Jones or somebody like that. No, no it was, <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was, uh, I can't remember. Do you know who rallied all these people to these demonstrations? Bernie Sanders. Right? No, yeah, right. Oh. Uh, no, it was, it was Alex Jones. It was oh, the one that was, was just urging them on, he and the president. Uh, I thought Alex Jones ha- didn't have a uh, place to talk anymore. He does. I mean, he look, as long as you've got a computer and as long as you can buy time on a server or as long as you can own your own server, you can spout any idiocy you want to spout. And if people say, well, you can't do it here, well, I guess you can't be on – he can't be on YouTube. But he can drag you to his site, and now he's charging people money for watching him. I can understand what these protesters are saying. What are they you know, saying? Uh, now, maybe for the greater good, they should be a little more magnanimous and and uh, uh, and and worry about their fellow neighbor. But there is a uh, an issue with uh, uh, you know your uh, your rights, your and uh, they're trying to make sure that there isn't an overreach by government. This, but this is an, this isn't a question of overreach. I mean. What the what the government is simply doing is asking you to do something. In most cases, they're not. You know, the, in New York, they have decided to impose a fine if you are too close together. Okay, um, this is for public safety. This isn't a matter of your rights. Your your you know you, the old saying is your rights end at the tip of my nose. You know, and um, and and the fact is, if you can make me sick, if you can make me die, then you're uh, you really shouldn't be allowed to engage in that behavior. We owe we owe it to our fellow man and woman to, uh, you know, to protect them. Uh, and it's rare that I speak up for Sweden. But with Sweden, they they had a, a little less overreach. It was, hey, if you're old, stay inside. Mm-hmm. If you're compromised, stay inside. Wear protective things. I'll tell you something. Of, I'll tell you. Here, here, had about the same rate of fatality. Well, here in New York, here in New York, the governor basically did did not lay down the law. I mean, lay down some laws like uh, we're going to close all the restaurants, we're going to close all the movie theaters, and things like that. That makes but, sense. But but he didn't um, uh, tell you how you should behave, but why you should behave in a certain way. And people, New Yorkers came to that calling. In other words, you look out on the street right now, there's nobody out there. Not out of fear, but out of wanting to kill this coronavirus, knowing the way you strangle it is by not feeding it. And the only way you feed it is by passing it from person to person. You know? And, and New Yorkers have responded to that. Uh, that's Los what, Angeles, they said that there were so many more people that were asymptomatic or uh, uh, not showing any signs of the, of the virus. But they, according to them, there was thousands and thousands more that were carrying uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the were positive for it, but mm-hmm. not showing things. And they think that this is going to help the second round uh, when the virus comes back, that there'll be a buffer of uh, people that are asymptomatic. By the and- time it comes back, you think we'll, it'll mutate? No, we'll probably have some kind of uh, uh, palliative cure for it. I mean, uh, something that you'll be able to take and it will minimize the, the problem. Let me tell you this little story. Watch, if mm-hmm. you get a chance, watch Frontline this week on PBS. Uh, they did a thing on the COVID virus. It was called Washington to Washington. It was from Washington State and what was going on there and then what was going on in Washington, uh, D.C., and patient one, because they know who patient one was, uh, this guy showed up, um, uh, patient one showed up at, uh, 
um, in a uh, one of these walk one of these walk in hospitals or something in uh, in uh, Seattle, and uh, he was patient one, and they were ready for it because they, as a city, had long ago said, "Let's keep our eyes on viruses around the world, and we see anything coming this way, let's be looking out for it." And they were looking out for this, and they found it. The first guy came out, and he got into the hospital. And he got real sick. And what they did is they gave him this re revisitier, whatever, however it's pronounced. Oh, uh, well, that's uh, the, yeah. It, maybe you can tell us how it's pronounced. Uh, uh, Remid Remidar? Is that, I forgot what it was. Revisit that was the uh, Revi order, Revisitier, uh, okay. I think, is the, uh, is the, uh, is the name of it. Uh, and um, uh, they gave it to him, and he lived. He did, did a turnaround within 24 hours. Now, why... That hasn't been used with all these cases across the United States because it's in great quantity. It's not one of those drugs that's it's hard, to, yeah. hard to lay your hands on. Uh, it's, not a, it's a drug that was created to fight Ebola, but somehow it, it didn't, you know. Uh, and uh, they just say that uh, it's all anecdotal, uh, the, uh, the research on it, but that so far, everybody that takes this stuff, they had a, something like... A, a hundred people they gave it to at one point, and only two died, and they don't think they died of the disease. They died of something else. Um, on the other hand, today they came out and said that they had been testing uh, this drug the president talked about and touted yeah. at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the Veterans Administration, the VA yeah, hospitals. Brian uh, posted something about it. Uh, yeah, re read that to us, back. Brian. Read that to us, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they said they tested uh, 368 patients total, mm -hmm. 97 took that, and there's a 21 point, sorry, 22.1% death rate. And the other one, they part. take it, and they had a less death rate. Yeah, so. 11%, right? Yeah. So, so, so in other words, there was, there was a, there was, it did, it, 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 it. Using a ventilator. Yeah, it said that that they found that it didn't work, and right. in spite of the fact that it didn't work, it also killed some people in the process. Yeah, this was uh, the stuff the president went on the air and touted, and people went yeah. running off to their doctors to get. Well, he, he was really quiet. He's been really quiet this last week, and then the, there was one reporter that kept asking him about it, mm -hmm. and then. Did you, know, you notice how fast though so today he dodged the question? He just went, oh, well, all the evidence isn't in yet or something, and then he went to somebody else. He didn't want to oh, talk he, about he it. Never, yeah. Oh, no, he dodged it. Dodged it big time. You know, 20% ice, that meant 80% lived. No, no. They lived, but they, they, it didn't work. It, it, yeah. It didn't work. They said it did not work. Well, 11% died on the placebo. Phil... Brian. Does it say 11% died on the placebo? Uh, that was the uh, forget the message. And yeah, they didn't take the drug, and there was 11.4%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's. I have, yeah, I have double the patient size, yeah. though. They, they say it's a small sample site, but, you know, still, if, if you were to offer me that stuff, I wouldn't take it. No. No. Even if you survive and you get a million dollars, it's like still there's a... Well, you know, it, why we call this stuff anecdotal is because if you survive, mm. uh, um, perhaps you can correct me on this one, Brian, but if you survive, you may have survived because you took the radizavir or brevizidir or whatever it's called, but mm. you may have also survived because you were going to survive anyway. All right? So they want to know that it actually worked on you. In the old days, we'd wonder if you could snort it. Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, I, I just think that by the time the fall gets here, we're going to have some, not what we call, well, with cures. I mean, things that they can give you at the hospital that will minimize the uh, impact of the disease. I think so far as a vaccination is concerned, we're a, a year and a half to two years away on that one. You know, it's it, but, but they say, well, yes. Alex, yes. When uh, when they have this testing stuff, mm -hmm. who's going to pay for the testing? The government. Well, the government hospitals do too. Hospitals. You hospitals. Know. So this is this is your lovely uh, governor right there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's from today. Mm -hmm. and, Murphy. And, 
Yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, you know, I, I noticed, Brian, that your machine comes with a TV cabinet. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So there's uh, this one oh, no. and those two. Those are our systems right there. Those are Infinity, our Infinity uh, systems. Mm -hmm. And then we have this other one system here. That's a new system. Now, what he was talking about there today is kind of interesting, and that is what makes the whole process difficult of testing is that the people who have the tests also sell the testing machine. And if you want to use their test, you got to use their testing machine. And if you want to run another test in your lab, you have to have that other testing machine. And if you want a third one, you got to buy that company's testing machine. That there's no commonality between tests as to the machine you use. And that's right. all because they want to make a buck, I guess. Well, you know, do, do, all the monopoly. What, do they use the same swab? Because uh, now we're short of swabs, right? No. Yeah. So, so Cuomo is so so yeah. So they're different platforms, and when you look at Abbott and Roche, they have their samples, their vials, their their liquid reagents. They have those off board, so they have to go ahead and take their system and they mix that out of their system with your sample. So our stuff is all self-contained. So like I showed you that cartridge the other night. Yeah. We yeah. we go ahead and load those on our machines with all the dried reagents. But mm -hmm. we have all those reagents. We were low on swabs at one time, but the reagents we have. So when he's talking about there aren't reagents for some of these that they're not getting, those are from the other competitors. Yeah. 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 They come from China. But, yeah. Right. Uh, yes, uh, Charlene. Uh, what company is he with? Who, Bri Bri Steffi. Brian? What company? Because, you know, New Cepheid. Jersey has, what is it? Cepheid. Are you in New Jersey? Because New Jersey no. has a lot of pharmaceuticals. No. No, no. okay. Yeah. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, did I see somebody else's hand up? No. No. How, well, how are you doing tonight, Brian? What are, what are your thoughts on all of this? Good. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Not, not Brian. Excuse it's, me. I, I meant Kevin. <laughs> just you know, <laughs> I I should just give this whole thing we up. I'm ge I'm we getting close no, I'm getting I'm just getting wacko lately. I, you know, I've been I take a Xanax to put me to sleep every night, and it robs my memory while it's at it. Are you still on the gabapentin? Or? No, I don't use gabapentin. Did they? Oh, okay. What drug did they say uh, could promote prostate cancer? Was it Xanax? No, uh, no, Zantac, I think. No, Zan I, I, oh. no, I didn't hear that with prostate uh, cancer. The Zantac? No? No. no. Yes, Ke Kevin, anyway, I was asking Kevin. So, I mean, any thoughts on any of this? No, just riding along. Um, my mom got exposed, so I'm kind of waiting to see what happened there. Oh, no. Well, I mean, how do you know she got exposed? I mean, did she get tested, too, or did you just know no, she got exposed? She's probably going to get tested. Uh, her caretaker got exposed about 13 oh. days ago. We think she's okay, but she's going to get tested. So yeah, but that doesn't out. mean that, that, you know that it, it doesn't mean anything where your mother's concerned because she's older and the caretaker is probably how old, you know? Uh, uh 40s. Yeah. Yeah. 50s. Yeah. But uh, they do a real good job there, and they've been actually. Uh, housing the people that are there, but the one person that goes in and does her stuff it only goes there twice or once every two weeks. Yeah. And she happened to be there doing her pills, and I guess she got exposed and then <clears throat> let her know right away, I guess. And we found out last week, and she's showing no symptoms no, or anything, okay. so that's good. Well, so usually, the, usually th this can happen f with between. I think it's two and ten days, is what I've heard. Yeah, and yeah. She, I think she, I'm hoping she dodged it. So hopefully, when she gets tested, everything's okay. Yeah. Vernon, how do you feel our response is going to this whole thing now? Well, our governor, thank God, we elected a Democrat this last time. Yeah, <clears throat> has been having the daily uh, updates, and yesterday was the largest increase in cases in the state's history. We had wow. 273 more new cases yesterday. Now, now, you're where again? You're in... Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I mean, these states, some of these states that have up until now been spared the, the brunt of this are now starting to get the brunt of it quite more. I mean, you know, you probably will never get up to New York's level because of the size of Kentucky versus the size of New York. But... Right. Uh, 
you know, I mean. But people are still getting antsy. I volunteer for Habitat, and we've got some people who are volunteers for Habitat who are anxious to get back to work on houses. And Mm -hmm. then we have this news that yesterday we had the largest increase in in COVID cases in the state's history. So I'm I'm thinking whoever's whoever's advocating that is being agitated by Alex Jones. I guess. Yeah. Are they? Are they? Are they they keeping? Are they asking you to stay at home? Yes. In, yeah, in Kentucky. No, but I mean, in that. Kentucky, are are the people in Kentucky being asked to stay at home, and have yes, they closed down is, restaurants and things like that? Yeah, you you are can. You the work? Restaurants can pick up only. I went uh, I went to and got a pizza the other day at mm-hmm. Pizza Hut, and they bring it to your car. Oh, Bernie, okay. uh, are you still going to work? Because your uh, employer is a uh, what do they call essential employer? Yes, uh, I work every Friday at Home Depot, and I do wear a mask and gloves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was the big increase, Vernon, in Kentucky due to a uh, assisted care facility uh, where there was a large death? Uh, I think there was some of that. And, you know, I've been watching Rachel Maddow the last week, and she's the one who kind of exposed where nursing homes have been totally neglected up until yeah. now. Mm. One of the reasons they got neglected, I think, is because the people who are in those homes are neglected. Mm. You know, this right. is this is like uh, where for profit institutions in the most for the most part, exactly. so they run on a dime. Well, I had my I had my mother in a healthcare facility in San Francisco before I got that her. Was in, the best? No, no, not the first one. She, in not, the Jewish home for the aged? No, the first one that I put we had her in because we were waiting to get her into the Jewish home for the aged, but. This place had to take her for the time being. Was you know they did the best they could, but they didn't have the budget to do it well. You know, and and so they were they didn't have enough nurses per per person there, and so on. It wasn't until we got her into the Jewish home where there was a care worker there for every person that was there. In other words, there were about three hundred people mm-hmm. in the place and three hundred people working there. Uh, Most of these homes, they also uh, use institutional food, which is full of salt and just just awful. Uh, you know, if the if the neglect doesn't kill you, the food will. Well, and also there's 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 a whole thing that goes on in all of that, uh, where people are uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, where, pe- where people are just not being taken well care of. They're, in other words, they're fed, then they put them in a chair and they sit there all day. You know, they don't do anything to give them activities or to keep them motivated and whatever. So, uh, you know, I'm not surprised that these places have become breeding grounds because I don't think a lot of these places really cared. Now, I have a friend who's in, in a facility right now, Will Durst. Yeah. I wonder how he's doing. His wife, Debbie, hasn't been able to see him since this whole thing started. Wow. Is uh, he aware uh, now, you know, that, Oh, he's aware of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I hope he's safe in the place that he's in. We have a friend, uh, he's named Lee. Uh, we love him dearly. And he had to go into one of these facilities because he's come down with some kind of condition where quite frankly, he can't stay at home anymore. And, yeah. and there have been a couple of cases of COVID in that facility, but so far he hasn't gotten it and it hasn't spread. But, you know, you worry about it as soon as you hear that somebody you send somebody to these places so they're taken good care of, and all of a sudden this becomes the breeding ground for death. It's horrible. I've got a buddy that I was talking to him about this the other day, mm-hmm. and he was saying, "Hey, you know, if you go to like Greece uh, or or Italy, you can live. You know, not with the COVID now, but." Uh, you can live and retire. You get up, you go out to the beach. Uh, you can get somebody to, you know, uh, wait on you, cook your food, and, mm-hmm. and so forth for, you know, very little money. And you could live a much better lifestyle. Matter of fact, he's going back to Greece and Italy to check it out uh, again in, in, for himself. You know, he's uh, in his later years. And he said, this is, uh, he doesn't want to end up in a home. He would rather go there and change his lifestyle where there's no stress and excellent food. And well, uh, yeah, I, the difference know. is the difference is to begin with, um, we don't really respect old people in this country. Other countries do respect old people. In fact, in England, as, as an example, once a year, if you're over the age, a certain age, they actually pay for you to have a vacation in another country. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, because, he, and it's their way of saying, you know, you contributed to the society for the all these years, and now we're going to take care of you. Even let old people be queen and prince and the, Yes, like exactly. <laughs> they, they, they especially let old <laughs> women. Seven, running around, driving a car, hitting people, yeah. and they still let him be the prince. I, I'm wondering how often Charles goes up behind uh, the queen and goes, Boo! Boo! <laughs> <You know? laughs> He tried to think why they put him out in Wales. I mean, just waiting, <laughs> waiting for him to not. I want to show you something. Um, look at my hair. Look at this. Look. Oh, look. And, and the other day I was trying to just yeah. clip it slightly using clippers, and I accidentally n took a nick out of me here. I don't know if you can even see oh. it. Um, so uh, Marjorie has said she wants to cut my hair for me. And I don't know. I, you know, I, I, uh, women all have this Delilah complex with guys. And every woman I've ever known has wanted to cut my hair. You get the, you, you're nodding yes, Kevin. You agree with that? Can, can you use that stuff that uh, Nair uh, on, on your? Well, I'm uh, sure scalp? I could, but I would look like Charlie Brown. You know, you're almost you're almost back to the old days. Yeah, I'm almost back to the old days. But I mean, I just yeah. it's just like you know, and I can't, I I I don't know when I'm gonna be able to go to a barber. And then I tried to order clippers from Amazon, and they're all out of them. Or <laughs> if I want if I want a clipper, I can get one I think delivered in June. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> by then, <laughs> by then, I'm going to look like an upside down Kevin. Okay. <laughs> Is that a comb over? <laughs> huh. Is that a comb over? Yeah, I could do a comb over at that point. Yeah. You know. Hmm. Boy. You know, so, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know what to do about this. If you look at the side, this is, hmm. I can't even tamp that down. Maybe, maybe I'll go down to the store and buy hairspray, although they're probably out of that, too. Yeah, you know, you got a product. You know, what's, yeah. you know what's wonderful to Rubbing. see? What's uh -huh. wonderful to see is all these hosts of these talk shows who are doing them from home, can't leave yeah. their home, can't go get a haircut, and their makeup person isn't there. And so they're all doing their own makeup, and their hair is getting, a, they're trying the best they can with their hair. And yesterday, I yelled and screamed for Marjorie to come into the, uh, into the, into the uh, bedroom. I said, look, and I showed her, and it was Kellyanne Conway talking to Fox News, and her hair, <laughs> and her, just her makeup, it was just, it was badly put on makeup, her hair looked crappy, it was stringy, you know. Um, you know what, she looks like my Aunt Tilly. It's wonderful to see how these people are starting to look when they don't have makeup, yeah. Yes, yeah, Kevin. The other night, the other night she said, this is not COVID-1, people, this is COVID-19, we should know by now. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, have you seen the? Uh, have you seen the the the? I guess it's a meme or whatever. The guy in the Walmart where he's swapping out the colors of the the color hair color thing, and he's taking one out of the box and putting it into another one, <laughs> and he's doing that with fifteen different colors, and he's taking one out of one box and putting it in the taking the blonde and putting it in the brunette box, and he's taking oh, the other God. color, the redhead, and putting it. You swapped them all out and closing the boxes back up and putting them on the shelves. <laughs> well, there the curtains definitely not going to match the rug. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's, that's, that's for damn sure. You know, I mean, this is just, uh, you know, it it it's it's get, going to get rougher now because, as they say, the summer is here. I mean, spring is here. Mm -hmm. The birds are chirping. They're flying around having a good time out there. And you want to be out there with them, and you and you really you can't, you know. I mean, I uh, I was talking to Ronnie today, and 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 I said to her, I said, at least you know, you can get in a car and you can go to some woods somewhere where you live, you know, and you can take a walk through the woods. And there's no way you're going to get the virus doing that, you know, not unless it really travels super far, uh, and. Um, I don't know about a lot of you. You have a car, Kevin. You, uh, Phil, you have a car. You can get in that car and go someplace safe. I, we can't even do that here in New York City. I went to Grass Valley on Friday. That was like a two-and-a-half-hour ride. Right. Each way. 
Yeah. But I mean, if you wanted to, if you Hold wanted on. to tomorrow go to the top of Mount Tamalpais, there's nobody yeah. else there. There's, you can go out there in the weeds and run They're around. They're saying that uh, the nature has changed too. Like all the animals are starting to come closer to the, the yeah. cities oh, and oh, you yeah. go down to the beach and all the, the, the wildlife's coming back up on the shore and. You know why? Uh, because uh, what's happening is uh, there the restaurants don't have food. Uh, there are certain animals. What is it like rats and so forth? Yeah. I think in New York, because the restaurants aren't disposing of food in dumpsters. The rats are, uh, uh, you know, looking around for for things to eat. Yeah, and, uh, I was talking about fish, like in Molokini and things like that, not rats. Uh, <laughs> there's very little fish in Molokini. It's it's been they they've trampled the coral. So well, they've all come back. Well, not, you know, not the porpoises. What and the all hell that is stuff. a mullikini? Down here in Monterey, the, the I, Monterey I, Bay has gotten more active. Yeah, yeah. I dive mullikini uh, fairly often, and I dive Monterey Bay fairly often. And I can tell you that Monterey Bay has really decent, uh, very good uh, life, but yeah. mullikini has been just trampled. That's the uh, crater that uh, yeah. off of Maui, Alex. I did that years ago, and it was it was okay, but. Uh, uh, I did it. I first did it in 1980, and it was unbelievably packed with life. Now, you know, there's a fish well, here. Uh, here's a, here, yeah, here's something that's so, interesting. Yeah. Here's something that's interesting. L.A., if you've ever lived there, and if you have, I my, my, my regrets to you, um, <laughs> is perhaps the most polluted city in America, mainly because it's in a bowl. It's in kind of a basin. And the basin, it has a hard time for exhaust and everything, smoke, to get out of it. Winds don't naturally uplift it and get it out. Uh, supposedly, you can see forever in L.A. now. Uh, yeah. In the 70s, L.A., 20%. you can see the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but as uh, things have improved with automobiles and, and uh, pollution control, uh, it's it gotten them a lot better. Yes, but supposedly it's very clear now. Wow. And that a lot of cities are that way, too. So maybe, maybe you know, maybe this is a good thing. I don't know. They said even China's cleaner. Oh, yeah. China. Oh, that's the yeah. place I heard. Beijing, which, you know, has a very bad pollution problem. Uh, they said it's just been, it was just clean as hell. It was just, ter you know, terrific. And their masks off. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... Um, yeah, yeah, but, so. uh, but, you know, so, I mean, it, it's been much more expensive to live this way, and it's been cheaper to live this way. It's more expensive in that I have to hire somebody for about 40 bucks to go get my food for me. But on the other hand, it's cheaper because I think I had, like, $200 and $20 bills in my pocket, and I put it in my pocket a month ago, and it still got well, about 180 <laughs> you know, so... I haven't been spending the money that way. <coughs> and, Do you uh, find that you spend cash or you use a debit card? Uh, we're, 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 we're using credit cards. I, I yeah. often find that I don't have any money on me, you know, because uh, I don't have any need for well, it. Well, yeah, but sometimes that you need it. You know, there's less and less need, but there's some markets I go to. There's a fish market here in, ta in our area. Where uh, I don't think you can use a, I guess you can use a credit card there if you want to, you know, uh, but uh, uh, but the, you know I, I have it as walking around money, and usually by the end of two uh, four weeks it's it's gone, you know, but it's still there, it's still there. The other problem we're facing, and this is a god awful problem, the allergies here have just been unrelenting, quiet as hell. Uh, just, I mean, uh, r terrible as hell, rather. Um, I think it was 11.2 today out of 12. And it's been even higher than that. And today I've been just, you know. You taking anything for allergies? like? Well, uh, well like I, can't take, I can't take some of the things because it affects the prostate. But So I take this stuff, which is, uh, uh, they, the, the marketed name is Flonase. This was, uh, it's, uh, it, this is the pharmaceutical version and it's mm -hmm. it's good it's you know it, it it helps a little bit nothing helps really i just i'm just a sniffly kind of person I, uh, we well, haven't heard I we just, haven't heard anything from uh from charlie you've been very quiet today uh, yeah i'm kind of worn out 
Worn out from what? Just sitting around, not doing anything? I can't sleep these days. I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I can't get back to sleep until 7. Really? So I don't, I'm not sleeping well. You know what I did with my Alexa? I found out you could do it. I, I told her to uh, play uh, sounds for sleep and to play oh. rain. And I did that this morning when I woke up and I wanted to go back to sleep. I'd never done that before. And I put on the rain and I went, God, that's annoying. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, it was, it was two yeah. hours later, I had fallen asleep and it just drifted me off to sleep. Years ago, I got the beach had, one too. I had a sharper image uh, uh, alarm clock and it played different sounds like you could have the ocean and waves and things like that yeah i, I kind of liked it rain know. is fine you know yeah. what what'd you say kevin you said that there are other sounds or something yeah like? there's the you tell them to play the ocean and they got the the beach oh they do okay yeah but then i i turned it on for marjorie so she could go to sleep tonight but after an hour it turns itself off and i yeah, should be out by then well, but <laughs> but i'd like to listen to it while i'm you know, sleeping for the whole night. You know, wake oh, up to the sound just, of the sea or whatever. Tell it to play the ramble. You'll be out in 10 seconds. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, uh, today Cuomo went down to Washington, met with uh, Trump uh, mm -hmm. to talk to him about testing and trying to get him to also give some money to the states because the states have not been bailed out. And they need bailing out at this point. Is that part of the new PPP package? No, was, no, it's not. But they're trying. That's what he was. What he was trying to get was for them uh, to add I that. Thought, I thought he did. Uh, I don't. You know, I don't know that he did. He said the president said he would consider it and present it. Okay. You know what the idea was? Uh, they delayed the second round of funding because they wanted to include things for hospitals and uh, testing and so And they also forth. wanted to see if Ruth Chris needed any more money than they were already yeah. getting. Well, He's that loan every time he goes I, in I, I thought that uh, with the prices that Ruth Chris charges, that the $20 million they got will get you a meal for six, and <laughs> yeah. you still have to pay for your own dessert and, uh, <laughs> and a, a separate potato, yeah, a separate yeah. potato. Yeah. yeah. By the way, it's Ruth's Chris. I said Ruth's Chris. It's very hard to remember. You want to say yeah. Ruth Chris's. You know. I know. As opposed to Charlie's Chris. She, she, bought, <laughs> she bought a restaurant called Chris's Steakhouse, right? Yeah. Ruth. And so the, it became Ruth's, comma, Chris Steakhouse. Chris. I see. Okay. That makes sense. That makes but, sense. Uh, but but, but she, she, they took the money. They took the $20 million. On the other hand, Shake Shack which is owned by Danny Meyer, who's a very big restaurateur. Uh, they gave him $10 million and he said, I'm sending it back. I'm not going to take this money. You know, Other people need it more than I do. Small well, businesses said, need it more than I they do. They said that, uh, or Trump said, that uh, these places uh, really shouldn't have qualified for the money, and they're going to go and get it back. Oh, you know? okay, I hope so. You know, I want to see Ruth's in trouble. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes, Vernon. One thing that um, I take back some of the nasty things I said about Home Depot, because when all of this hit, one good thing they did for their workers was any full-time employees were given 80 hours of emergency leave. And part-timers like myself were given 40 hours wow. of emergency leave. And if you don't use it by the end of the year, they'll pay you for it. And four weeks later, they did it again. So full-timers now have 160 hours, and part-timers have 80 hours of emergency leave. That's very good. That's the yeah. way you take care of your people, you know? That's the way you respond to a the number of people in the store at any one time. Yeah, yeah. Number of customers. Wow. Yep. Well, just stay, wear the mask, wear the gloves. Yes, quickly, yep. Patrick, because the theme's going to play here. Why? Yep. Yep. Wait a minute, hold on a second. What? Jeff, probably just give me some vinegar. Oh, I was going to say something. What were you going to say? <laughs> yeah, I was getting the, I'm getting the money from the government, which I don't particularly need. Yeah. But I'm going to get to some cousin who's broke right now. That's good. I gave half of mine to Marjorie. Mine. 
She she took it like uh, like uh, like. Uh, well, she took it. Anyway, hey, listen, I uh, I gotta go here because the theme is playing. Thank you so much um, to Brian, and thank you so much to Charlie. Thank you, Phil. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Charlene. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you uh, to Vernon. Thank you to uh, <coughs> to uh, our good friend uh, 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 Tony. Uh, I always forget your name. Uh, uh, Patrick, uh, Kevin, hey, all of you, boy, and Brian. God, this this makes it quite a few nights for you. Good, good, good having you on here. We really enjoy you. You're funny and you're smart and you you really add to it. And all go of to you. Georgia for a tattoo. Well, well yeah, we're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it. Why don't you all kind of wave goodbye and I'll wave back at you, okay? There they go. That's the citizen panel. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe some of them will stick around and be part of the citizen panel on the uh, on, on the Jack Bishop show, which is the intersection, which comes up next right here on GabNet. I will be back here again tomorrow night, 10:30 Eastern Daylight Time, same time. Uh, hold on a second, what happened to my? I did it. What happened to my? I, oh boy. I, 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 there we go. I, I, suddenly my screen went blank. Eh, nothing goes right. Anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.